Welcome to Linda Strickland Art, No Rules Watercolor. I'm Linda, this is Schooner, and today we are painting another white or light subject. If you're new to watercolor, you may want to check out my setting up and getting started videos on my YouTube channel, Linda Strickland Art. My goal today is to give you just enough information so that you feel confident to paint exuberantly. So grab a brush and let's get started. So this is a slight variation from the heron that I did earlier on painting a white subject, and I'm gonna approach it the same way. However, for this card, I put blue painter's tape around the edge. Oh gosh, probably about a quarter to half an inch in. And that way when I peel this tape off, I'll have a nice crisp edge. It will look give the look of being matted. Um, so I just have blue painter's tape kind of folded back on it. Uh, so it'll have a nice white rim around it. You'll, you'll see. All right, I'm going to approach it the same way. I've got a flat brush and clean water, and I'm going to paint everything that is not the subject with water. You can go right over this tape. It won't hurt anything. And if you remember this, just buys you some time so you don't have to paint so quickly, and it gives you a nice wet and wet look wet and wet, very popular watercolor. It's like everything watercolor color should be, <laughs> wet and wet, dripping and running and mingling. We're gonna let the colors mix on the page. Again, use a very limited palette. And this is a, this design is, these birds are actually white. So um, there's not a lot to paint once you get the background done. They paint up pretty easy. As a matter of fact, this design, if you've got my Coastal Cousins cards, this is a great one to start with. All right, so I've got everything wet. I'm gonna start at the top again and turn it upside down again so that the, the paint starts to run this way rather than onto my birds. I'm gonna use start with the ultramarine blue, which is the darkest one. A nice strong mix of it. See how wiggly it is? Made my juicy puddle. I'm gonna get this bad boy wet. So I can take the edge of this flat brush and get right into the smallest area. And then I can also turn it on its side and cover a large area. All right, I've got, I'm gonna use this Opera Red. I didn't clean my brush, which doesn't hurt a thing because they're gonna mix anyway. And drop some of that in there. Paint right off the edge, right across that tape. Remember, don't get too picky with the tip of the brush till you absolutely have to. The more you can lay that brush down and push the pigment out, the prettier it is. I'm gonna clean my brush because my pink has turned into violet, which is very pretty, but I want some pure pink on there. Okay, that looks good. I like it. Here we go. working my way around. And again, like I said in the other video on um, painting a white subject, don't get too fussy. Get in and get out. Paint it and then leave it alone, which is the hardest thing to do because it's pretty and it's fun and you just want to mess with the colors. But my best advice to you is paint it and leave it alone. So I'm going to paint quickly but not fast. That's another one of those tricky concepts. Now, that's really small in there. I'm gonna get a round brush to get in that there. I'm not feeling confident. So you can see where this round brush doesn't cover the territory that that flat was doing. Back to the flat. You know you're painting hard when you got a brush in each hand. All right, how are we looking? I'm gonna pick this up and let it roll and move and drip. I have the urge to splatter, which I may be sorry I did. That's kind of stark pink right there, huh? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put a little blue in there and let it uh, mingle. Kind of pretty. 
I'm gonna clean up these edges a wee bit. I think I'm gonna go right over those feet because they show anyway, it's on there in, in, the, in ink. So they're still there. All right, I'm gonna take my own advice and leave it alone. I'm gonna dry this and I'll come back and finish it up. Okay, I dried this with a blow dryer. It's best to let it air dry, but it doesn't hurt it to, to, to put a blow dryer on it. And I've got clean water. Again, that's, that's a good rule. It never hurts to have clean water. And I've got a number six round brush that I'm gonna do some small work with. So I'm gonna put, these birds, They put, this card pretty much paints itself once you do the background. I mean, this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna put some shadows on the birds and then paint their heads and the black tips on their wings and they'll be done. So I'm gonna use raw sienna, which is kind of, it's an earthy yellow. And I'm gonna put some shadows under that. Generally, shadows are blue and cool, but they can be warm. And in this case, the background is so cool, I thought he need, they need a little warmth on them somewhere here and there. So I'm just gonna put a little yellow on them and I don't even know that I have a plan here. Maybe even the tips of their wings have some, just to warm it up a bit. I think the blues are prettier if there's a little something warm on them. I'm gonna clean my brush, tap the excess off. Now I've got just water on this brush. I'm just gonna kind of soften these edges and let this blend in. And if I have like that one, I think had too much on it, I can just lift some of that off. It's still wet. So again, as long as it's wet, I can, I can move it around. Um, I'm gonna add a little blue to that. I'm gonna use the manganese blue because it's again, a warmer blue. Make my juicy puddle, even though this is a tiny brush, I'm still, still working with a juicy puddle. Ooh, that's pretty strong. Let's lift some of that up. I still want them to be uh, to be white birds. Got a little bit of blue on this brush still. Maybe this wing back here is in shadow since it's behind this other one. Just kind of playing and having some fun here. Um, when this is finished painting, you can come back in with a any kind of permanent marker. A Sharpie marker is uh, waterproof and permanent, and the Sharpie Ultra Fines, um, this one right here, work great on watercolor paper, and it doesn't move around. And you could put as much detail as you wanted in here. You could do, go, go further with the wing, the wing feathers, all those kinds of things. I like an impressionistic kind of unfinished look. That's just my thing. You do your thing. Do what you like. It's your painting, so paint your painting. Don't paint my painting. This tail looks a little bit boring to me, so I thought I'd put some color on him. Okay, that made me enough shadow. They're basically white birds. So now I'm gonna mix up what constitutes or reads as a black. And to make my black, I'm gonna use the darkest blue, which is the ultramarine. And not as much water now, because I want a very strong color. And I'm gonna put kind of the color complement into it, which is the burnt sienna, which is kind of an orange. So you can see that it automatically, I mean, it very quickly looks black if you can see this on my palette. But I, I like the, my black to actually lean toward a color. It's leaning toward a blue. Here's what it looks like. Instead of being too flat and dull, I want it to be exciting and interesting. Even your darkest darks should be luminous, exciting color. So here we go. I'm just gonna put a little black on the tips of these wings. Their heads are also black, heads and beaks, or this guy's are. I mean, there's any, any number of seagulls, but these guys are gonna have black heads and black tips on their wings. I was trying to paint around their eye, but I don't know that that's necessary. I don't, I don't think they really, you need to see their eyes. There's a tip here. It's interesting to me how the very littlest amount of darks makes the color, the painting just kind of come to life. That's the value as a value as in light and dark. The darkest dark against the lightest light is the most exciting part of the painting. So this almost black, 
or something that reads as black against the white bird, that's where the drama happens. I missed a wing. Okay. I think that does it for these guys. Now, all I'm gonna do is take this tape off. There we go. Don't forget to sign your paintings. You can use a sharp, again, the Sharpie marker. Sign in the lower right-hand corner or wherever you like. It's your painting, do what you want. Thank you for watching Linda Strickland Art, No Rules Watercolor. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and comment below if you have any questions. And please, post photos of your watercolors, both the fabulous successes and the exuberant fails. See you next time.